What's it like living in the South Bay, Los Angeles? Well, it's like living in a never ending summer vacation. That's what it's like. The best part, it's right now, it's September. After everyone went back to school, we locals get our beaches back. Oh, that's a hard yes, right? But did you know that Los Angeles had beaches? It doesn't, not really. It's got beaches, but not beaches, okay? Well, Venice, it's both. Well, anyway, but what we're really talking about is the beach cities of Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach, and Redonda Beach. Yes, there's Torrance, the end. We'll talk about Torrance later. So what's the first thing you think about when someone mentions Manhattan, Hermosa, or Redonda Beach? Is it the ultra high cost of living and the super expensive real estate? Or is it the beautiful wide sandy beaches, the piers, the near perfect weather? Or if you're going to the beach in the summer and there's nowhere to park that's actually near the beach. The South Bay is all of that and more. The amazing sunsets, the surfing, the volleyball, the culture. It's all part of what makes this place so desirable. But yeah, the parking this summer can be a, a real challenge. Roadhog! Space hog! The reality of living in the South Bay is that it's a lifestyle that just comes at a cost, right? And that cost is not just monetary. The cost of living in a place that's super crowded in the summer and super competitive when it comes to buying a house. I bid $100,000. I bid $200,000. Or even just getting a decent parking spot. Oh, no parking spots. But for those who are willing to live here, the rewards are, well, they're well worth it, right? From the outdoor activities to the food scene, there's always something to do or explore in the South Bay. Yes, real estate is expensive. Why is it so expensive, you say? Well, everything I mentioned already, it's true that in Southern California, the closer you get to the big blue wet thing. Uh, the big blue wet thing? The big blue wet thing, yeah! The more expensive the real estate. That's just the way it goes. That's easy to understand, right? Currently, the lowest price in Redonda Beach behind me is a one-bedroom, one-bath condo near the pier or a two-bed, two-bath condo a mile inland. They're both priced at $699,000. The highest price house in Redonda Beach currently is a four-bedroom new construction townhome 300 feet from the ocean for $4.195 million. The lowest price in Hermosa Beach, the one bedroom, one bath condo, a mile from the beach, it's $579,000. And the highest price house in Hermosa Beach, just down that way, currently is a five bedroom house on the Strand for 20.7 million. In the beach next door in Manhattan Beach, the lowest price is a two bedroom, two bath condo, a little over a mile to the beach for 1.090 million. The highest price house in Manhattan Beach currently is a 1922 Craftsman on the Strand for $30 million. Did I mention it was expensive here? The food scene of South Bay is rocking with just about every type of food you can imagine from dive bars to high-end celebrity chef restaurant experiences to beachfront pancakes. All three beach cities are full of mostly locally owned restaurants with, you know, with a few chains here and there. But beach cities are all about small family run businesses, not just restaurants from coffee joints to custom hat designers to boutique guitar shops to breweries to wine bars to local design companies. There's lots to explore. Walking downtown Manhattan Beach and Hermosa Beach is super fun because of all the small local businesses. In Redonda Beach, the Riviera Village is the place to get out of your car and explore for sure. Boutiques and ice cream and chocolate shops, surf shops. There's too much to mention. And yes, we're made up of three small towns, yet there's so much to offer here. In the three beach cities, there's three separate school districts with each city having its own. So there's a total of two public high schools, four middle schools, and a lot of elementary schools all over the place. All the school districts have tons of top schools. And both high schools, Redonda Beach Union and Manhattan Beach's Miracosta, have a myriad of programs and sports. If you live in Hermosa Beach, you can choose which high school you want your kid to go to. Volleyball is a huge deal for the three beach cities. Hermosa Beach, Manhattan Beach both host several volleyball tournaments during the year. There's almost always somebody playing or practicing at the beach daily, except like right behind me. <laughs> All the beach cities have volleyball courts set up, as you can see, and people are here nearly year round. Little known fact, Redondo Beach and Manhattan Beach, those beaches are owned by LA County, but Hermosa Beach is solely owned by the city Hermosa Beach. That was set out in its original land charter in the first decade of the 1900s. 
So now you heard it from me. Surfing here is also a big deal with the biggest swells coming in the winter. Sometimes summertime is pretty flat, like today. There are several surf competitions all during the year. And speaking of little known facts, ever heard of George Freeth, a renowned Hawaiian surfer? He introduced surfing to North America in 1907. His SoCal surfing started at Venice Beach, and yet he began giving demonstrations at Redondo Beach for the hotel goers at the Hotel Redondo, a popular destination thanks to the Pacific Electric Railway red cars. Those car tracks were actually right here where the bike path is in Manhattan Beach. Freak skill and charisma attracted large audience on his eight foot redwood surfboard. Yeah, eight feet of wood. Anyway, he helped people popularize surfing in the South Bay. He taught locals how to surf and even saved some lives as a lifeguard. Freeth's legacy is celebrated in Redondo Beach with a bronze bust honoring his contributions and surfing and lifeguarding. That's in the Redondo Beach Pier. There's also a lot of paddleboard opportunities here. You can cruise King Harbor in Redondo Beach on your stand-up paddleboard or compete in the 32-mile Catalina Classic. You start in Catalina Island over there and you paddle across the channel to the Manhattan Beach Pier. That sounds like a fun day. The weather here in South Bay, it's a mild Mediterranean climate. Warm, dry summers like this. Cool, wettish winters. Summers are typically sunny, average high temperatures in mid-70s. Today it's high 80s. The ocean breeze often, you know, provides relief from the heat, making it very comfortable for outdoor activities. And our real summer starts in September, right now, through October, when we have Santa Ana weather patterns, which uh, give us several days of 80 to 90 degree weather, like today. We usually don't talk about May gray or June gloom unless it's May or June and we're in it. So we keep that as a secret. Okay. Now winters are mild. Their average high temperatures are in the mid 60s. This is when we get most of our 15 inches of rain. Overall, the beach cities offer, you know, comfortable and enjoyable climate year round, making it really attractive destination for visitors and residents alike. That's why we're here. What's it really like living in the South Bay? Well, we walk. We walk a lot. We ride our bikes. There's my bike right there. Oh, you can't see it. We get our exercise and the weather is per you're perfect and you just never have any trouble parking when you're on your bike. Stores and restaurants are close. Everything is so convenient. If you live up the hill a bit, we ride our electric bikes. They're great for getting around on the hills. I left out a ton of stuff. But you see why we want to live here. The beach, the weather, the views, the convenience, the lifestyle, the beach. Did I mention the beach? There's just so much to do here. What's your favorite place in the South Bay? Let me know in the comments below and send this to a friend who really is dying to know what's up in the South Bay, Los Angeles. This is why we live in the South Bay. Oh wait, Biff!